Before I lift my cares, I will lift my arms. I want to know you, I want to find you in every season, in every moment. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, we are so delighted to be able to come your way and spend this time with you uh, in the Word of God and uh, spend some time together in prayer. 
When the Lord Jesus was here on the earth and uh, as he began his ministry, one of the earliest recorded teachings for us uh, is famously or very commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 and also in the other gospel, uh, we see him go up, position himself on, on a hillside up on a mountain, and then there are huge multitude. There's a huge multitude of crowds of people gathered together to listen to him. And in the Sermon on the Mount, as, uh, in, as he begins to talk to the people, one of the earliest things or the opening things that he talks to them about is what we refer to often as be attitudes or blessed attitudes. And so over the next few weeks, we want to talk about these blessed attitudes that the Lord Jesus spoke to the people about. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, in just a few verses, Jesus lists nine blessed attitudes. Now, of course, he doesn't, we don't have a record of him expanding and explaining each of these, but he just states them. He just tells the people, these are blessed attitudes uh, that Uh, that God himself looks at. And so, when Jesus talks about this, he he begins each of these nine statements by saying, blessed is so-and-so, or blessed is this condition of the heart, blessed is this attitude, blessed uh, is this. And then he also ends that statement by saying, there is an outcome to that. If you have this attitude, here is something that you can expect. Here is an outcome that will grace your life, that will be upon you, that will become your portion or your experience in life. Now, we want to ex- examine each one of these nine, but let's just look at the fact that he said blessed. That word blessed simply means to be blessed by God and to be blessed before God. That means God looks at this condition of the heart or this attitude of the heart very, very favorably. It draws him, you're blessed by God, and you're blessed before God if you have this hard condition or this hard attitude, is what the Lord Jesus is saying. So let's spend some time here examining these things, and we will keep in mind that God looks at our heart. You know, he knows the condition of our heart. He knows the attitudes of our heart. You know, in the Old Testament, the prophet Samuel He said, you know, God does not see as man sees. Man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. And so each of these attitudes are hard attitudes, which are very visible before God. God looks at them. And then in response to that, he graces our life with different things. So as Jesus begins this this series of blessed attitudes in Matthew, the fifth chapter and verse three, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible just for us to get a, 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 an understanding of, of, of the various connotations of the words he used there. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3, he says, Blessed, spiritually prosperous, happy to be admired, are the poor in spirit, those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. So the first attitude that he talks about is of being poor in spirit. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. What is their reward? Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So he's giving us one of the keys, very important keys, that makes what God has in his kingdom available to us. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These are the people who are going to experience, who are going to enter in, they're going to experience, they're going to really enjoy and have, in a, have a personal experience of the things of the kingdom of God. These are people who are poor in spirit. Now, let's draw the differentiation or the difference between poverty and being poor in spirit. Jesus is not talking about poverty. He's not, he's not saying blessed are the poor, per se, in the sense of those who are uh, in, in a state of poverty. He's talking about blessed are those who are poor in spirit. It has to do with the heart. So this is something any of us could have, meaning 
If you're a very, very rich, wealthy person who's got lots and lots of money and no material lack, well, you can still be a person who was poor in spirit. Or if you're a person who doesn't have very much on the earth in terms of material possessions, that's okay. He's not referring to that. He's talking about the hard attitude. So what does it mean to be poor in spirit? As the Amplified Bible says, those devoid of spiritual arrogance, those who regard themselves as insignificant. To be poor in spirit is not to have any arrogance, uh, to see yourself as insignificant, or to see yourself as dependent. You know, when you look at a poor person, now I'm talking about in the natural, a poor person, maybe a beggar on the street, somebody who doesn't have anything. They are looking to somebody else for help, for assistance, for aid. They have nothing that they can lean on themselves, nothing that they can uh, fall back on. They are totally dependent. They are totally expectant and seeking help, external help, because there's nothing of their own selves that they could lean on or depend on. So now you take that idea into a spiritual heart attitude. Jesus says, in the spirit, you have to be poor. Now, how can we as believers understand this and live this out? Because on one hand, we know that really God has blessed us in the spirit, that uh, we are in Christ Jesus, that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, that uh, he has made us the righteousness of God. He has given us abundance of grace and we reign in life through Jesus. We are seated in heavenly realms in Christ and, and all of that. So really, in truth, in reality, we are actually blessed in the Spirit. That means there is no lack for us in the Spirit because of what God has done for us in Christ, because of what God has made available to us in Christ. So really, there is nothing we lack. In the Spirit, we are totally, completely blessed. We are in Christ. We are complete in Him. We are filled with all the fullness of God. We have the Holy Spirit. And, and in Christ, God has done amazing things for us. And yet, Jesus is telling us to be poor in spirit. That means, while I recognize who I am in Christ, while I recognize the richness of the blessings God has poured on me in Christ, yet I am in this continued state of dependence on God. I'm completely devoid of arrogance, and I don't count myself in my own self to be of anything of significance. That means I know that everything that I am in the Spirit is purely, completely, and totally because of what God has done. You know, in the natural, we talk about people who are self-made people. I mean, they've made it, they've achieved great things because of maybe their hard work, because of their, you know, uh, intelligence, because of how smart they were, whatever. They're self-made people and they've achieved things and, and therefore they have a reason to, you know, be uh, confident, to, you know, sometimes be arrogant and whatever. Because they have achieved that. Now, in the spirit, that's exactly what we should not be. That means we are in a place where we are saying, God, everything I am, everything I have, everything I've become is entirely because of you. So that's the hard attitude he's saying, being poor in spirit. In another place, in Matthew, the 18th chapter, Jesus drew another comparison in Matthew 18, verse 3 and 4. He said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. He says, if you come like a little child, you humble yourself. That means no matter who you are, in a worldly sense, in terms of accomplishments, in terms of knowledge, in terms of wealth, in terms of success, whatever, whoever you are. If you choose to make yourself like a little child, 
He says, yours is the kingdom. This is how you enter the kingdom. This is how you experience the things of the kingdom. This is how you receive the things of the kingdom. If you choose to do this. If you choose to become like a little child. So he's talking about childlikeness. Obviously, you're not talking about childishness. He's talking about childlikeness. A child totally, is totally dependent on its parent. It's, there's nothing that it can hold on to itself, nothing that it can say that, you know, I've accomplished things or I have this, I have that. No. The life of a child is one of complete dependence on its parent. There's nothing that the child can, you know, hold on to by its own self. And so Jesus is saying, blessed are those people who have this kind of an attitude in their heart. They may have everything in life, but the heart attitude. That of being poor in spirit. That of saying, God, I am everything I am because of you. I have nothing of my own. And recognizing that and walking in that attitude, he says, yours is the kingdom. You know, this is the key to experiencing the dynamic power and the working and the expression of the rule and the dominion of God himself. For you and me to walk being with this attitude of being poor in spirit, we will experience the power, the glory, the greatness of the kingdom of God. If we walk with this attitude, the kingdom of God begins to manifest in us, through us, around us. A very powerful key. The next attitude that Jesus begin, men, makes mention of is in verse 4, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. He says, Blessed, that is forgiven, refreshed by God's grace, are those who mourn over their sins and repent, for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. Blessed are those who mourn. They will be comforted. Now, what does this mean here? To be mourning in your spirit. Now, Understand he's not talking about a state of being depressed. That's not what he's talking about. You know, when you read this verse and you say, you know, blessed are those who mourn. You, in our mind, we imagine somebody who's going around with a sad face all the time, depressed and down. Now, that's not what he's talking about. The Lord Jesus is saying, blessed are those who mourn. Really, those who are broken in spirit. They will experience the comfort of God. They will experience the empowering of God. So that's what he's talking about. That is our heart, in our heart, we are broken or we are mourning because of something, because of sin, because of the need around us, because of people who are hurting, people who are suffering. And he says, you know, if you mourn because of that, if you are broken in your heart because of that, then you are going to experience God's overpowering, empowering, overshadowing grace upon your life. That's what he's saying. Comforted. You will be comforted by God. God himself will begin to extend who he is upon your life. Blessed are those who mourn, who are broken in their spirit because they will be comforted. Now, to be broken in spirit means that we have to have a hard attitude that is tender, that is sensitive, and that is open to things around us, that is responsive to what we see around us, as opposed to a heart that is cold, that is uncaring, that is uh, shut up, it's shut down, and it cannot be touched, cannot be affected by what we see around us. Whether it's sin, that you're broken because of sin. You see God, you see people in sin and doing things wrong, and your heart is broken, you cry out for that. Or you see poverty, or you see need, or you see people who are hurting because of you know, what they've gone through in life, and then you are touched by that. And you begin, you are broken because of what you see. Your heart breaks for the things that break the heart of God. 
uh, uh, of the things that you see in people's lives, which break the heart of God, and your heart is broken. You mourn because of those things. Now, when you and I have such a heart, a heart that is broken, broken in spirit, what happens? God himself begins to come through in your life. He extends himself in your life in those areas. In Psalm, the 34th chapter, the 18th verse, the Bible says, The Lord, that means God himself, is near to those who are of a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. So those who are of broken heart, when you are touched, when you mourn, when your heart is grieved, when your heart is moved about something you see around you, it is in those areas that God himself begins to move in. The Lord is near. God extends himself and he begins to grace your life. He begins to release his empowering. He releases, begins his strength, his comfort in those areas. So blessed are those who mourn because they're going to experience the touch of God in the very areas that is affecting them. What is your heart attitude? When you see sin, when you see pain, when you see suffering, when you see hurting people around you, is, is your heart touched by that? You and I must understand that when we are broken for certain things, it's in those areas that God begins to minister to us and he begins to release himself through us. And the areas that your heart mourns, it's in those areas that you're going to experience comfort. You're going to experience the power of God being released through your life. Let's look at one more before we end this program. The third heart attitude Jesus spoke about is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. He says, Blessed, inwardly peaceful, spiritually secure, worthy of respect, are the gentle, the kind-hearted, the sweet-spirited, the self-controlled, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the gentle, or as the King James puts it, blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth. So here's the third heart attitude Jesus is talking about. Walking with a heart or a spirit of meekness, that of gentleness, that of being kind-hearted, self-control. So as you walk with that heart, with that attitude, you will inherit the earth. Now, you know, this is so contrary to the way we normally think. We think if you want to inherit the earth, that means you want to take possession, you want to go in and occupy, you want to have influence, you want to take, uh, um, have a control over things, then you've got to be somebody who's a go-getter, you've got to be somebody who's strong, very forceful in the spirit. You've got to be very uh, you know, aggressive and so on. And that's usually the, 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 the idea that we have, uh, normally speaking, in terms of the, of, of the worldly sense. But Jesus is telling us something exactly opposite to the way the world thinks. He says, look, if you are meek, if you are gentle, if you're kind-hearted, if you are yeah, self-controlled, and if you are sweet-spirited, if you have that kind of a heart, you're gentle, you are the one who's going to have great influence on the earth. You are the one who's going to inherit. I mean, you're going to have influence. You're going to take control. You're going to have uh, uh, mastery. You're going to take possession. That's the kind of person Jesus is saying you're going to become. While it is totally opposite to the way the world thinks, I think it's a great challenge for you and me to choose what Jesus taught us. He says, let's be people who are gentle in spirit, knowing that Jesus said, we will have great influence on the earth. And this truth is, is brought out to us in many places in Scripture, and I just want to make reference to that. In uh, Psalm 37, verses 10 and 11, the psalmist says, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Think about that, verse 11. The meek, the gentle, they are the ones who are going to inherit the earth. They are the ones who are going to have lasting influence. The wicked will be there, but they will pass away. But the meek will have lasting influence on the earth, and they are the ones who are going to enjoy abundance of peace. Now, you know, uh, this is something that you and I must learn. That, and it doesn't come naturally to us, for meekness many times is connected to weakness. 
And you see somebody who is meek, who is kind, who is gentle, we think, oh, he's a weak person. But that's not what Jesus said. He said, those who are meek, the other ones are going to have great influence and dominion on the earth. And so you and I must learn to embrace this. Embrace gentleness that God brings into our lives by the Holy Spirit. We invite you to visit our church website, apcwo.org, where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes, and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us. So on the program today, we've taken some time to look at the first three blessed attitudes Jesus spoke about. Being poor in spirit, having a spirit of meekness, gentleness, and having a heart that is tender where we are broken in spirit. You know, let's take some time just to pray together and say, God, create that in us. Because these are attitudes that draw God to to us and that We stand blessed by God and blessed before God when we walk with these hard attitudes. Let's pray and ask the Lord. God, create that in us. Let's pray together. Father, we pray. And even as we examine truth given to us by the Lord Jesus, we pray that you will create that in us. Give us a heart, Lord God, that is poor in spirit. Give us a heart that is broken in spirit. Give us a heart, O God, that is meek and gentle in spirit so that we can walk the way you want us to walk before you. And we thank you for the blessings, the promises, and the things that this, these will lead us into God, experiencing the kingdom, experiencing your comfort, your nearness, and giving us influence on the earth. And I pray you'll create this for each of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, Live life to Jesus' way.